we're talking about something totally different. We're talking about, hey, how, how can we change the behavior of your whole team? How can we, you know, change the discount percent of your whole company? How can we, you know, change the growth rate of your whole company? What's that worth to you, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Billion Dollar Company or $10 billion company or $100 billion company? What would it be worth to you if we could shave off half a percent on your, you know, uh, discounting averages or, you know, and, and so the conversation just absolutely changes. I think the one thing about uh, comp that's been so enlightening over the years is when you think about how people pay comp and the ways that they, they do it, so often when you ask them and you drill down and you sort of say, well, why do you pay this way? So often the answer is, you know, we just have always done it that way. Or, you know, the VP of sales has kind of got the biggest, loudest voice in the room and he or she is saying that we should do that way. And I always thought that was kind of weird. And, you know, especially because, you know, I know a lot of VPs of sales and I was a VP of sales. And, and while they're great folks, they're not always the best comp people. The fact that they've been paid on a comp plan most of their career does not make them a comp expert. And I think that's one of the big fallacies in these companies. And yes, they do have the loudest voice and they're the biggest paid. And so their their voice carries further. And so you have this revolving problem where the, the majority of these comp plans get, get created by people who are not comp experts, but solely because they're the big dog in the room. And what I think, we have figured out years ago was that, hey, look, let's let data decide, right? Let's let's not try to be the smartest person in the room and you know, or the loudest or the biggest paid. Let's just let the data decide. Let's say, how are the best companies that are performing the best? How are they doing it? And that's really what I think was the big aha moment for exactly the big change from a tactical ROI to much more strategic was being able to show companies using our empirical data set that we've now collected over 15, 16 years, uh, it's billions and billions and billions of transactions where we can answer those questions for companies of how they should pay. <laughs> and we can do it based on empirical data. And now, of course, as you know, the, you know, that's sort of the next evolution of that, which is the thing I'm probably the most excited about right now is not just interpreting the data but now letting machines learn the data and, and have them find insights that, that humans aren't smart enough to see the patterns and let the machines sort of tell us what, what's happening in these organizations and, and using all this great data to be instructive. That's really kind of, I think, nirvana. That's where it's like, oh, holy cow, light bulbs are going on and you know, people's eyes are going, wait, so you, you can literally predict when my sales reps are gonna quit 